Last week, we were invited by Nintendo to go hands-on with the upcoming Switch Lite, where we put the system through its paces and tried to discover as much about it as we could. And in that process, we learned five things that really stood out to us. Now, you can hear my overall impressions of the system, as well as my thoughts on all of these things in greater detail in our preview, but this is designed to talk about the major discoveries without taking up too much of your time. And we begin with the most obvious difference. The D-Pad. Rather than the segmented buttons on the left Joy-Con, the Switch Lite features a normal directional pad. And it feels good. Really good. In fact, we're pretty sure it's even better than the D-Pad featured on the Pro Controller. Now, this isn't the most scientific of comparisons, but when we used it, it felt immediately comfortable. It really feels like a step up from what D-Pads have been like on the Switch so far. Speaking of which, the system still features gyro controls. I was able to aim my bow with ease in Breath of the Wild, though because I was recording, I didn't exactly realize I didn't actually have arrows. Whoops. Still, their inclusion is appreciated, as that means players will be able to enjoy Splatoon 2, Doom, and other games that support gyro on the go with no issues. That said, you're going to need some extra Joy-Con to play games like Super Mario Party or 1-2 Switch. They can be synced to the system like normal, but as you can see, the icon for the Switch Lite is the entire unit, rather than the central unit with two Joy-Con for the traditional Switch. One of the other immediate differences you'll find with the Switch Lite is the texture of the system itself, as it's slightly rougher, resists fingerprint smudges, and offers a better grip than the original Switch. But due to this change, the Auto Brightness option has been removed from the settings as the bezel is now opaque. That means there would have to be a cutout for the ambient light sensor to detect the brightness of the console's surroundings and adjust accordingly. Nintendo chose to forego that option, but the actual range of brightness of the two systems is the same when the option is turned off on the original. It's a small change, but worth noting. Finally, we asked Nintendo what they were going to do about the ongoing issue of Joy-Con drift and if that would affect the Switch Lite. In response, they said, We expect our hardware to perform as designed. Whether this means the problem has already been solved or not is difficult to say, but considering that Nintendo has been fixing problematic Joy-Con for free, it's safe to assume they're at least aware of the problem. Hopefully, they've taken steps to prevent this. But those are five of the most significant Switch-like discoveries we encountered during our hands-on. If you want to know what we thought about it in more detail, be sure to check out our full preview. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to Game Explained for more on the Switch and other things gaming.